Hi ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Gratchik here to uh, introduce you to our new unit on Sesame Street Heredity. So let's get started. Today's class is brought to you by the letter G and the number 9. Can you tell me how to get to Sesame Street? I don't know, but I can tell you some of my favorite characters. Our first character is a happy fellow. He's a friend to all and he loves to take long walks on the beach. Put your hands together and welcome Elmo. Our next character is totally into fashion, loves to go shopping, likes to wear makeup, and really think boys are icky. Please put your hands together and welcome Zoe. Our next monster loves to dance the disco. He might be seen on Dancing with the Stars. He secretly wears a superhero outfit. And uh, please put your hands together for Grover. All right, welcome Grover. Nice to have you here at Elkhorn. Our next monster is uh, the friendly monster that hides in your closet. He randomly snorts when he gets nervous and he really gets excited over chocolates. Please put your hands together for Telly Monster. All right, welcome Telly, good to see you. Our last monster uh, is trying out for American Idol this year. He loves music class, loves to, uh, to wear knitted shirts made by his grandma. Please put your hands together for Honker. Yeah, there he is. Have you ever wondered what would happen if Elmo and Zoe fell in love, maybe at a middle school dance? What if they dated for a really long time and decided to get married? Who knows? Maybe even have a child. I wonder what that child would look like. Hmm. 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 Ah! <laughs> Let's hope not. That guy's pretty scary. Let's try this again. I wonder what that baby would look like. Ah, yes, that's so much better. So, why do children look like their parents? It has a lot to do with those chromosomes. Remember, you inherit half of your genetic information from your mother and half from your father. Well, how does that happen? Well, how do parents pass their traits on to children? Think about it. You get half of your genetic information from your dad through his sperm and half from your mom through, from her egg when there's fertilization. So we wanted to take a look a little bit closer at uh, what kind of things can be passed along from generation to generation that we can watch. Well, we've been really carefully studying these five Sesame Street characters. Take a look at some of their characteristics. What unique things do they have that we could watch if we were to cross some of these characters? Hmm. One thing points out really quickly to me, their, their eyes. Take a look at their eyes. Really unique shapes. What about their noses? Unique coloring to some of their noses. How about their lips? I know, look at those lips. All kind of unique. Some of them have the same kind of lips. What about their body coloring? Could we watch their body coloring? Oh, I hope you thought of that one. And the last one we're going to talk about is hair type. So these are the five that we're going to be uh, considering. Eye shape, nose color, lip color, body color, and hair type. And your science teachers have been working very hard to figure out how we can map this. And we've come up with a plan. Take a look at this. You have this sheet with you, this, this uh, genotype phenotype chart. And you can see that we have eye shape, nose color, lip color, body color, and hair type for a characteristic. We have all the genotypes that we've figured out are possible for the Sesame Street monster population. We figured out the types of genotypes there are, and we figured out the types of inheritance. Your science teachers are quite spectacular. There's this chart here. This is where we're going to uh, put some of our genotypes and phenotypes. So let's get started. Let's practice with Elmo. So Elmo, when you look at him, and we're specifically going to look at his eye shape right now, take a look at his eyes. They're unique. 
Now look up at that chart. That chart at the top gives you two options for eye shape, for phenotype. They either pop out of their head or they're flat. I could tell from this picture here that Elmo has the uh, pop out kind, or we're going to call that exo. So I'm going to need to take and write in the word exo where it says phenotype. And now I'm going to move to the right where I see genotype. Got two to choose from, Big E, Big E, or Big E, Little E. Well, we're going to write down both of them for now. All right, let's move on. Nose color. Elmo does have a unique nose color. There he is. So what phenotype do you think Elmo has? Ah, you're right. So there were two choices. There were pink and orange, and if you said orange, you are correct. And the genotype that goes with that is lowercase p, lowercase p. Please make sure that you make those look like lowercase letters so you're not confused. Let's move on. Our next one is lip color. Here we have uh, uh, Elmo's lips. And when we look back at our genotype phenotype chart, we see there are three choices, magenta, red, and purple. Uh, red lips are what I think he has. And the genotype for that is big M, little m. One more. Let's try uh, body coloring next. He's got red body coloring. I can tell that. That's what makes Elmo famous. So when we look at body coloring, there's a whole lot of choices here. Uh, let's match that up. We definitely know that his phenotype is red. So let's move that there. And let's record the genotype as capital R, capital R. And now we can move on to the big question. Is Elmo bald? We gotta make a choice. Is he a hairy monster? Is he not hairy? Well, we can consider all that body covering that we'll call that fur. So let's talk specifically about his hair. Look at his head there. Hmm. I guess to answer that question, it would also be helpful to take a look at his family. Here's Elmo's grandma, Elmo's grandpa, Elmo's mom, Elmo's dad, Elmo's sister. And take a look at the guys in Elmo's family. Nice mustache, but no hair on top of his head. Grandma does. Mom has hair. Dad doesn't. Sister has hair, but Elmo... <sighs> I guess we have come to the conclusion that Elmo is bald. So we need to go and write that into our genotype phenotype chart. Yep, Elmo, you're bald. And... It's a lowercase h, lowercase h. That would be the genotype. Now let's go figure out the rest of these characters. I'm going to uh, put up the next characters, and you should go and try them out. Grover. Look at his lips. Look at his eyes. His eyes are different than Elmo's. His nose, lips hairstyle. We'll, I'll be back to talk to you about Elmo, or Grover. So hopefully you have figured out that the eyes were flat on the face, so endo, or lowercase e, lowercase e. Definitely his nose is pink, low, capital P, capital P, or capital P, lowercase p. The lips are definitely red. Big M, little m. And the body is blue, capital B, capital B. And just like our friend Elmo, Grover is bald. All right. It's time to move on. I think you're getting the hang of this. Let's talk about Zoe. Sorry about that. Zoe um, has interesting eyes. If you were to look at a doll of Zoe, you would see that Zoe's phenotype is a pop-out eye. So she would have the genotype, big E, big E, and big E, little e. Her nose, definitely pink. Big P, big P, big P, little P. Lips, that's a little harder to tell. 
I went with red. Body color, orange. And she is no doubt a hairy monster. Let's move on and take a look at uh, Telly. Pause the video and try this one on your own. When you're ready to come back, uh, I'll have this done for you. All right, so I determined that his eyes were flat, his nose was orange, his lips are magenta, the same as his body, and he's bald. Um, and I filled in the genotypes. Our next monster is Honker. Honker is unique. Um, go ahead and uh, pause the video and when you're uh, done with your genotype phenotype uh, chart, uh, come on back and we'll uh, discuss it. All right. No doubt that this Honker has pop out eyes and you can see I have the genotypes written in there. Definitely an orange nose. I can see those purple lips along with its purple body and it's hair. Uh, definitely a hairy monster here. I like the uh, honkers because they have unique hair. They're sometimes different than their body color. Uh, one thing I want to caution you with at this point in time, I would like you to go back and make sure that you've indicated whether these letters are capital and lowercase. It's really important that at this point in time you don't confuse those. So uh, please go ahead and do that and um, Stay tuned for the next video as we're going to uh, take on uh, some jeans and some punnet squares. We'll see you soon.